trust him in the Lord. Trust in him. Not just now, but until we die. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Our reading is found in Psalm number 96. Psalm number 96. Psalm number 96 is where we are today. Psalm number 96. When you found it, you will discover these words. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared among above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Father God in heaven, in the name of Jesus the Christ, we come. God, we thank you again. We've come today to sing praises, to give honor, to give glory unto you, Lord. God, we thank you for another privilege. We thank you for another opportunity. Lord, we say hallowed to your name. There is no God like you. You are above all gods. All other gods are idol gods. And so, God, we come to praise you. We come to lift up you, for you are the majestic one. We declare your glory. We declare your praises. Lord, we thank you for just being God. God, we thank you for keeping us all week long. And you've given us an opportunity to come again to start a brand new week. For that, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we realize that many are gone. Many are not present with us today. But you trusted us just a little while longer to honor you. God, we thank you, Father God, for we know we don't deserve it. We know, Father God, we have fallen short. We messed up. We all are sinners, Father God. And for God, for that, Lord, we are thankful that you've given us another chance. Lord, bless us today. Forgive us today. Bless us, Lord, that we will raise our voices to honor you. That we will involve ourselves in the service. That you, Lord, and you alone, Father God, will be praised. That we will forget about our issues. And that we will focus on you. That our prayers will be aimed to you. That our praises will honor you. That we will get out of ourselves and out of our conditions to give you the glory. We thank you for the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. We ask you to bless him, Father God, that he will be a blessing to us. Bless us, Lord, that as we go through this day in this service, that you will keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise. Allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray. And we ask it all. Amen. Amen. Amen and thank God.
goodness of God and how he has brought you, how he praised you, how he, he has helped you. Doesn't it ever make you want to just shout? Hallelujah. When I think about the goodness of the Lord and all he has done, it ought to make you want to shout. How he kept you when sickness was all around you and it should have been you. It ought to make you want to shout. When people were losing their homes and you're still in yours, it's enough to make you want to shout. It wasn't because you prepared so well. It's because of God's goodness and God's mercy. When others were dropping out of school and you were able to succeed and get your degree, it's enough to make you want to shout. It's not because you were so smart. It's not because you're so intelligent. It's because of the goodness of Almighty God. Is his amazing grace. Do you ever think about when you should have been divorced? Because things weren't going so well in the house. It's not because you came to a compromise. It's because of God's amazing grace that kept you. Have you ever thought about how the thieves had had your account? And they were looking to withdraw all of your money. It's not because you had a, a lock on it that kept you. It's because of the goodness of the Lord. It is enough to make you want to shout. Have you ever thought about the accident that you were in? Or the accident you could have been in? And you are here today. And you're walking on your own. And you're still speaking. It's enough to make you want to shout. Have you ever thought about the peace slip that you deserve? The layoff and the firing that you deserve? It's not because you kept your mouth quiet or closed. Because you ran your mouth every chance you got. Have you ever thought about when you told the boss off? And he or she gave you one more chance. It's not because you were under control. It was because of God's goodness and God's mercy. It's enough to make you want to shout. Sunday school, you will find out Mark chapter 10, verses 17 through 22 was a part of your daily reading. And the Sunday school teachers get real excited when you prepare, when you, you read your daily reading. So just in case one or two of you didn't go through your daily reading and study it and, and focus on it, let me lift that word before you today, just for a few minutes. Mark chapter 10, verses 17 through 22 is right before... <laughs> It's right before blind Bartimaeus start crying out, have mercy. <laughs> it comes right before blind Bartimaeus. They told him to shut up. He said, he, guess what he did? He got louder and louder. Because when your blessing is present, you need to get louder and louder. When your blessing, when Jesus is in the midst, don't you let anybody shout you down. 
You better make sure that you get with God. Blind bottom man said, I ain't studying y'all. He said, I ain't studying y'all. I, I hear Jesus is passing by. All right. All right. And because Jesus is passing by, the Bible says that blind bottom men got louder and louder yes, until indeed. Jesus stopped. And Brother Whitlock brought out the fact that, <laughs> that, that the same folk that told him to shut up now said, come on, come on, let's get over here. Let's go. Jesus want to see you. Right. It's called peer pressure in the spirit. All right. Mark chapter 10, verses 17 through 22. And you found that you would discover these words. Now, as he was going out on the road, one came running knelt before him yes, sir. and asked him, good teacher, what shall I do to have to, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Amen. So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good, but one that is God. Amen. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. And he answered and said to him, Teacher, all these I have observed from my youth. Then Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, one thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come, take up the cross and follow me. But he was sad at this word and went away grieved for he had great possessions. I want to talk about trusting Jesus. Trusting, trusting Jesus. During the dilemma that we're in today, we need to put our trust in Jesus. Many have trusted their, their politicians or may I say they're public servants. And you know you can't depend on them, brother in that law. All right. Many have trusted in their children. And they have gotten old and their children have forgotten them. Many have put their trust in their parents. And they realize when their parents passed on the way, they left them nothing. Many have trusted in their spouses and found out that he or she was living a lie all their lives. Many trust in their friends and their family members. But I want to tell you, friends will become few and families will walk off and leave. I suggest to you today that you put your trust in Jesus. For Jesus, Somebody said he to the sick, he's never lost a patient. Yes, sir. To those who are in trouble, he's a lawyer in the courtroom. Yes, sir. The old folk back home would say he's a bridge over troubled water. Yes. Big Daddy said he is my walking cane. You ought to put your trust, Sister Henry, in Jesus. Because he is trustworthy. When we look at the text, when we look at the text, when we look at the text, this man was not doing bad like some of us. Well, matter of fact, he was doing really well, brother. He was he was doing very well by the standards of mankind. He was doing really well by man's standard. He he was a baller in a shot call. Well, <laughs> by man's standards, he, he he really had it going on. By man's standard, he didn't want for anything. He had a whole lot of stuff. Yes, sir. He lived in a neighborhood where you had to put in a code in order to get him. The gate would slide open and the gate would slide closed when you put the right code in. 
When he drove up to his private domain, he, he had a long gate that took minutes to open to his private domain. This fellow was doing really, really good. Yes, sir. You know, some of us are looking for six figures. Let me just tell you, he had 8, 10, 12. He had all he needed. Yes, sir. And the text declares he had enough to share. Mm -hmm. Let me just share with you this man in the text, this rich young man in the text, he worked when he wanted to. He got out of bed when he wanted to. He didn't have to do any things he didn't want to do. This man had it going on. Is there anybody in the room got it going on? Just raise your hand. If you really got it going on. He, he had no problems. He had no issues. He had no things that he had to deal with on a regular basis. This guy really had it going on. But he heard that Jesus was coming by. In verse 17 of Mark chapter 10, he said, the, the text declares, now as he, now as Jesus was going out on the road, one came running. Now let me tell you, rich folk don't run for people. The people run for rich people. But when Jesus shows up, yes, sir. You better forget who you are and honor who he is. So the rich man, the rich man came running. And the text declares, not only did he come running, he kneeled down. He fell to the ground. He bowed down before Jesus. Yeah, yeah, when presidents come in, music is playing. When presidents walk in, people are standing. When president, presidents are announced, people are clapping. So you stand, you clap, you play music for men. But when Jesus comes in, you got to kneel down and bow down before him. Right. Even the rich man knew that Jesus was worthy of bowing down before him. Even the rich man knew that Jesus was worthy of running to and even the rich man knew that Jesus was and Jesus is the good teacher. Rabbi, good teacher. Jesus corrects him, tells him that you have really no reason to call me good for none is good but the Father, but God himself. So he asked the question, what must I do? King James. King James asked the question, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to inherit eternal life? What must I do to get to go to heaven? Yeah. That ought to be a question with the rich and the poor. I had the luxury. I had the privilege. I had the opportunity to do a young man's funeral here that used to be here this past week. And the young man was a godly example before his peers. And during the expiration period, the, 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 the period where they express themselves, the, the, the expression period, you don't know what you're gonna get. Right. So one young man, one young man walks up and, and he gets the mic and he says, before my friend passed away, I never thought about God. I never thought about praying. I never thought about actually getting in touch with heaven until my close friend passed away at an early age. Yes, sir. That's the sad summation of many, many young people these days. Yes, they don't really think about God. They don't really think about heaven or hell. They don't really think about leaving here at an early age. Mm -hmm. But God allowed me to hear what that young man said. So in the middle of my message, I said to those who were gathered there today, because he has said it, God has brought us to this place so we can think about it, so we can consider it, so we can think about where we're going when we leave here. I said to them that, that God has a mansion just your style, but you got to be pre-approved for your mansion. 
You have to be pre-approved. You, you have to make preparation for your mansion. Teacher, why, why, preacher, are you telling us this on a Sunday morning? This is not a funeral. It's because you're not guaranteed to make it back home today. And you need to know that there's a way that leadeth unto death. And there's a way that leadeth unto life. If the rich man needed to know, then certainly we need to know. If a rich man needs to know, then we need to know how must we be born again? How can we inherit eternal life? He says, good teacher, rabbi, master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Well, I say to you today, there's nothing you can do but trust the story. There's nothing you can do but trust Jesus. But let's follow the text. The text declares that the young man want to know, what must I do to have eternal life? Jesus says in verse 18, why are you calling me good? Why are you calling me good? There is none good but one, and he is God. Let me just pause right here and let you know that at this point, Jesus is not referring to himself as not no longer deity. He is still deity. He's always deity. He is always God. He's always the master. But what he does is he put himself on the human level. Yes, sir. And he says to this man, if you are going to get to a point in your life where you're going to heaven, you need to first understand that there is none good but God. That's my first point. God is good. My first point to you today is God is good. I, I know it's a secret. I know, I know you think because your loved ones have passed on, because you didn't get what you asked God for, and you're still praying over and over again, and you think God has dealt you a bad hand. I stopped by on my way to the rapture to let you know that God is good. How you know he's good? He, he watched over us all night long. All right. The senior saints would say it like this, God, I thank you that you're good for the bed I laid on was not my cooling board. Right. They would say, Lord, I thank you for the sheets I wound up in was not my winding sheets. Thank you, Lord. Young folk, what they're saying is a cooling board is when you're dead and you're done. They're saying that the bed I laid in was not my cooling board, and because I'm not dead and done, God has blessed me, and he has proven that he is good. Amen. Aren't you glad God is good? Amen. You can't depend on people to be good. I'm so glad that God is good. My first point to you tonight is that you know and you remember that God is good. Yes, when your haters are hating on you, just remember God is good. When men walk out on you, just remember that God is good. When sisters turn their backs on you, just remember God is good. And Jesus declares there's no man good but God. So, so you need to understand. You need to understand that God is good. God is excellent. He's good. God is powerful. He's good. There is no God like our God. There is none like him. He says, no one is good but one. His name is Jesus. See, the reason why the rich man talks about what he can do to be saved is because in the Jewish days, what they would do, they could buy any teacher they wanted to. If you had money, you can have life, you can have education. If you had money, you can even have religion. But Jesus sets the record straight and let him know, even your teachers, that if you sit at the feet of, those teachers are not good, only God is good. Verse 19, Jesus says to this man, he says, I tell you what you do. You know the commandments. And I want to check and see if you follow them. Okay. He says, you know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Children, false witness mean don't lie. 
Do not defraud. Defraud means don't misuse people. Honor your father and your mother. He, he quotes Exodus 20 in the Ten Commandments. And one thing you must understand, he brings these Ten Commandments full circle and he deals only with human relationships. You see, sometimes we are so spiritual until we forget about human relationships. Sometimes we are so caught up in the spirit that we forget about human relationships. Jesus says human relationships are valuable to us. We need to understand that human relationships are nothing that we can pass over. We have to address them. He says, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, but honor your father and mother. Children is the first commandment with promise. If you honor your father and mother, your days will be long upon the land that the Lord our God gives us. How does he do it? He does it because when father and mother gives you wisdom, when you follow that wisdom, you are blessed. You're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're always blessed because you follow the wisdom of, I know they're old folk. I know you think you're smarter than they are. I know they don't know technology like you do. But let me tell you, technology didn't get them where they are. It was God in heaven who has gotten them where they are. Big Mama didn't have a third grade education, but she had connection with God. And every time she called on God, she was confident that God heard her. It's only because God is sitting in heaven and earth is his foot through. God is the one who blesses us in spite of us. You're not so religious until God got to bless you. You're not so saved until God just has to shower his blessings upon you. And certainly you don't dress so well until you just deserve the blessings of God. It's because of God's amazing grace that we sit here. It's nothing that we have done. It's not the money that we have. It's not where we live. It's not that we've taken care of our bodies so well. It's because of God's amazing grace that we're still on top of the ground and the ground's not on top of us. Thank God for his grace. Every morning your eyes fly open. Before you put your feet out the bed, you ought to say, Lord, I thank you for another day. It's because of God's goodness. Yeah. It's because of God's mercy. Yeah. It's because of God's amazing grace. So my first point is that God is good. Verse 20, Mark chapter 10, Mark chapter 10, verse 20, it says, and he answered and said to him, he answered Jesus, this rich young ruler, he was a young man, Braylon. He was a young man and he had money. Let me just stop right here. There is no problem with young men and young women having money. Matter of fact, it's a benefit to have money. The Bible says that money answers all things. You got rent that is due? Money will answer it. You got a car bill that's due? Money will answer it. You got clothes that you need? Money will answer it. Just don't let money be your answer for everything. It says, it says right here, verse number 20, Mark chapter 10, verse number 20, he says, and he said unto him, he said to Jesus, teacher, all these things I have observed from my youth. My next point, my, next, my first point was, God is good. My next point is, glorying, glorying, another word is gloating, Glorying in the religious, glorying in the financial, and glorying in selfishness. Too often, too often, too often, we, 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 we glory in how religious we are. Look at what he says. He says, he says, he says, look at here, Jesus. I have kept these commandments that you mentioned. I've kept them from my youth. I've kept them, I've kept them, I've kept them from my youth. So now he's gloating. Now he's glory in who he is. It, it reminds me of church folk. Even in the 21st 21 century, 
Church folk will tell you, hey, I've been saved for 40 years. My question is, have you accomplished anything for the Lord in 40 years? I, I've been walking with Jesus for 30 years. My point is, have you been obeying Jesus for 30 years? People will always glory in stuff that they think will make them outweigh somebody else. But let me tell you, when it comes to spirituality, we all are on the same plane because we are at our best. We are nothing more than filter rags before God. Can't brag on who you are in the Lord. You can't brag on what the Lord has, has done for you and he segregated you. You ought to brag on what he's done because he's not only doing it for you, he's doing it for somebody else. Right, you got to brag on God right, and how he's kept you. <laughs> You, you, you can't brag on how religious you are and how sanctimonious you are. I mean, church folks know they can look good. They can look torn up. They, they walk in when they think they're holy. They walk in with the nose in the air and they, they trip around and, and they want everybody to think they're holy. Baby, you just disfigured your face and those same wrinkles you got in your face. When you get older, you're going to have those same wrinkles in your face. God don't want us looking down on anybody because all of us are on the same level on the same plane. Now let me just share with you. That's why this building is built in the shape of a cross. And the, the reason why the sanctuary is the foot of the cross is because all of us are at the foot of the cross and all of us need Jesus. And we got to come to the foot of the cross and look up to Jesus in order for him to bless us real good by he been a plenty. So, so he says, in verse 20, he says, look, Jesus, well, I have... Honored and I've kept these commandments since I was young. I have kept them. Don't brag on your money. Don't brag on your religion. And don't brag on yourself. Because self can be taken out. God doesn't even have to speak. God doesn't even have to wink. God doesn't even have to give us a second. We can be up jumping around right now doing our holy dance and all of a sudden we're out of here. God knows how to turn the lights out. Richard Pryor used to tell this lie. And if you're real spiritual, you may not want to listen to this, but Richard Pryor, Richard Pryor used to tell this lie. Richard Price says, man, I'm, I'm so fast, I can turn the light switch off and be in the bed before the lights go out. <laughs> Let me tell you something. It was darkness upon the deep. Yeah. The earth was null and void. There was nothing in existence. And Richard Pry is dead and resting in his grave. But God saw fit and God spoke in the midst of nowhere on the balcony of darkness in the midst of nothing and said, let there be light. And it wasn't a second notice. Bam, light came skipping down through the universe. It's because of God and who he is. We can't glory in ourselves. We can't glory in our religion. We can't glory in our money. We can't even glory in our children, our grandchildren. Now, grandparents are the world's worst. Somebody said, you just wait till you get some. <laughs> they will occupy your time all day long. Talking about this little boy. This little girl. And then when the joker becomes a rascal and tells me everything, they even think it's cute. When I grew up, nothing was cute. I, I thought my dad and mama had problems. They didn't think anything was cute. We could we, we, we show up and say hello to Miss Annie. Boy, get back there in that room. Go outside and play. The problem today, we won't send children outside to play. We let them lock up in the house. Men, boy, children, boy, children need to be outside. Right. And then let me just say it. Let me just say it. I was thinking about it yesterday when I was mowing my yard. I said, man, God didn't give me not one single boy. I'm out here pushing this lawnmower. I mean, I, I, mean, and I, I got a yard. <laughs> It's not a spot. I'm back there pushing this lawnmower, and it, it started raining. I said, oh, it, it's raining. I had to get past the day, and then it stopped. 
I'm like in prison. And the thing that I remembered, at the age of eight, I've been pushing, since the age of eight, I've been pushing a lawnmower ever since. Let me just share with you. If you have a boy in your house that's 10 years old or older, you shouldn't be mowing any yard and you shouldn't hire anybody else to mow it. You have to teach him now how to be men later. Then when he gets money of his own, he can hire somebody else to do it. But while he's there, you gotta teach him how to work now. Boys are so soft these days. They couldn't have grown up in my house. My, my daddy, my daddy said, your daddy walked through the house and he just said it one time. And y'all don't mind if I just said it like he said it. Daddy didn't go to church every Sunday, so I got to say it like he said it. Daddy wasn't that, that, that spiritual one, but he had wisdom. Right. He said, I am not, it was three boys before we had a girl, I am not raising any sissies in this house. I'm raising men in this house. And you're going to be a man. Now, we, we're just six, seven, eight years old. He's already talking about manhood. What it says to us, we have to teach boys how to be men when they come out of the canal and the doctor pat them on their rear end and say it's a boy. We have to teach boys how to be men so girls can marry somebody who's a man. One woman talks about talk about when she goes to the store and, and she got a two-year-old boy. She had she had a canned goods. She would take one canned good, put it in one bag, and give it to the little boy at two. When he got to be five, she would take three canned goods, put it in one bag, and, and give it to the little boy and let him take it to the car. When he got when he got to the house, the little five-year-old would take that bag that had three canned goods in it. He would take it in the house, he would put it on the shelves, he would make sure it's all set up and everything's going well. So one time, the, the woman, that, the cashier, they, you know, they're always in your business. Why do you make him carry that stuff? Because when he gets to be a teenager, he'll carry every bag in the house, and I won't have to ask him to carry anything. you got to build boys to be men today and not little sisters. Verse number 20 says, I have observed all these things. From my youth. And when you teach boys to be men and girls to be girls, they understand who God is and they refuse to glory in what they have accomplished and they have to give glory to God Himself. First, verse 21 Jesus being a compassionate God. The, the text says, Then Jesus looked at him. The original text in the original Greek. Is interpreted this way. Jesus looked at him and saw him glorying in his finances, saw him glorying in his in his religion, saw him glory in his selfishness. Jesus just looked at him. Let me tell you, when you're doing the wrong thing, all you need is Jesus to look at you. It reminds me of back home. It reminds me of back home. Daddy didn't have to say much. Mama didn't have to say much. And, and she would just and, and we knew whatever we were doing, it's time to stop it. I mean, it, it was like in our house, when we were in the street, even if we were talking stuff that went on in the house, they would just give us that look. And they would tell you what's in the David's house stays in the David's house. And when you got out of place, they just gave you a look. And you would think that it had thundered. You would think a storm had taken place. We would start shaking and shivering. Here we are, taller than our parents, bigger than our parents, but when they gave us a look, we shut completely down. Many times I shut down and didn't even know I was doing something wrong. I just knew I got a look. And when I got that look, I just, I just fold my arms. And if they ask me anything, I just say, yes, ma'am, yes, sir, no, ma'am, no, sir. What, what else do you need, mama? What else, what else can I do for you, daddy? But children these days tell their parents where they need to go and where they go. And they would tell your parents to sit down and be quiet. Mama comes to the house and I think she just comes to the house so she can tell me what to do. She comes to my house that I've been paying for, that my wife lives in. I'm grown, I'm over 50, I'm almost 60, and she comes 600 miles and tell me what to do in my whole house. And I can't do nothing about it. English and I can't do anything about it. 
She says, turn that TV back on. I turned the TV back on. I didn't say, yes, ma'am. I turned the TV back on, and I ran back up the stairway <laughs> in my house. But it comes to whether you teach them respect today. If you teach them respect today, they will clean you up when you're old. They will walk you around the corner when you're old. They will stand in long lines at the grocery store when you're old. They will go stand in line so you won't have to stand in line when you're old. But you have to discipline them today in order for them to stand in line tomorrow. All right, all right. He says, he says, Jesus looked at me. <laughs> Children get a look these days and they just keep doing what they do. <laughs> Parents said, don't go out that door. They go out the door. I was so scared to go out the door when mama tell me and daddy tell me, don't go out the door. I said, I'm going to drop dead the moment I step out the door. I remember when, when, uh, when the disease came out, herpes came out. Mama was a nurse and she said, boy, you mess around, put that thing in the wrong place, it's going to drop off. I thought it was going to drop off. <laughs> I believe what they say. I trusted them for the, for the betterment of me. And guess what? It shut everything out. Everything I thought, everything I thought about doing, mama shut it down. And didn't come back later on and apologize for it. Just shut it flat down. Sometimes all it takes is a look. Jesus looks at him and tells him that you are wrong. But then it says Jesus loves him. It says Jesus loved him. Jesus, the same Jesus that disciplines us. The same Jesus that corrects us. The same Jesus that instructs us. That same Jesus have love and compassion for us. The Bible says he loved him. I want to tell you, not only is God good, God good, not only should be, you not be glorying in your finances, glorying in your stuff, glorying in your religion, not only should you not glory in yourself, I want to tell you, God has compassion and love for you. He loves you, regardless of how things going. Somebody need to hear today, God loves you. Amen. God is not just good, but God loves you. Let me say that again. God, the almighty God, is placing his attention on you. And if it had not been anyone on planet Earth but you, God still loves you. If you don't get your answer, God loves you. If you get the no for an answer, God loves you. If you get yes for an answer, God loves you. If you get wait for an answer, God loves you. I'm going to say to somebody today that's thinking about suicide, God loves you. Somebody that's getting ready to turn the switch and cut their own life out. Let me tell you, God loves you. Not only does he love you, he offers a wonderful plan for your life. God has it planned out. Don't give up on God. Don't fall out on God. Don't quit on God. God loves you. He's a loving God. None of us here deserve to be here, but it's because God loves us. And he keeps right on blessing and blessing us. Verse 21, it says to him, one thing you lack, go your way. Sell whatever you have. Give it to the poor. Well, Jesus just slapped him. I mean, flat, slapped him. And he's slapping somebody else. <laughs> somebody said, now, Jesus, I was with you until you started talking about my stuff. <laughs> Jesus, I was with you until you started talking about what I have. Jesus, I was with you until you started talking about my possessions. Jesus, you act like I got to give up everything to have. I just asked you for eternal life. He says, give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come take up the cross and follow me. Let me just share with you. Jesus is saying to us, we got to stop recognizing and putting our hope in stuff. 
and follow him. Jesus is saying, we have to stop thinking people have the answer and follow him. My last point, and I'll leave you alone, going with Jesus. You, you got to get to a point where you're willing to go with Jesus. He says, give up what you have. Sell it and put the money in the presence of the poor. Can God trust you enough to do that? Now, 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 he's not saying, look at how Jesus words it. He says you will have rewards. He says you will have treasure in heaven. So Jesus flips the strip. He's no longer talking about salvation and eternal life, but he's talking about sanctification and your rewards in heaven. Let me just share with you. The way to Christ is through your heart. You have to accept him in your heart. And it is that way today. And this was true for this man because his heart had not been turned toward God. Where's your heart? Is, has your heart been turned toward God? Or are you still hanging out and, and stuck on what you have? All this stuff. Let me just serve you notice. Ladies, I don't know if women do this now. Uh, back in the day, they had china cabinets. Yes. And the china cabinets in Louisiana, they would have fine china in there. I don't know why they call it China, because I think it was made in the U.S. of A. But they had China cabinets, and they had the best of the best dishes in the China cabinet. And whenever somebody came over, they would make sure they walked them past that China cabinet so they could stop and glare and gloat and look at that China cabinet. Oh, girl, where did you get that stuff from? Because it was making a statement. And you know, before, before we even got on that page, I said to Sister Damon, if there's any fine stuff in this house, I'm going to eat off every bit of it. I'm not just saving it so folk can look at it. <laughs> if a plate get broken, Brother Miles, we ain't got to go get any plates. There are some in the cabin, and we're not waiting to company come over to eat out of it. And because it had become a tradition when guests would come over, you would bring out the very best. Now, let me tell you, charity does start at home. If you one of those women that got your couch covered with plastic and nobody else going to sit on it, let me just share with you. When you get out of here, another woman going to have it and another woman going to sit on it and she going to take that plastic off and she going to sit on it and somebody else going to lose their manners on it that you didn't lose on it. Oh yeah. And those boys that got their britches dropped to the ground, they gonna sit on it with their underwear on it. You better enjoy it while it's yours. You better enjoy it while it's here. There are some folks you can't even eat in their car. If your car is so nice that we can't take a trip and eat in it, let me tell you, somebody else gonna be driving. One fella, one fella, one fella decided we were going on a long trip. He gonna rent a car. He gonna rent a car. Got a brand new car. Why would I buy a brand new car that I'm not gonna drive, brother? Earl? I'm gonna drive a brand. Oh, we going out of town. We got 600 miles to go. I don't want to put those miles on my car. When I get through with a car, can't no one in here use it. It is dead on the rock. And if it keeps running, it's a miracle from the Almighty God. He said, man, I don't want to put those miles on my car. I, I don't want to put those miles on my car. You know, I said, man, it's a brand new car. It rides well when you put miles on it. It doesn't get broken in until you get about 35,000 on it. So he refuses to go out of town in his brand new car because he didn't want to put the miles on it. And guess what? A few months later, he flipped that car over seven times, and it didn't have many miles on it. Man, I would have been pulling what hair I did have out. When I get one, it's rolling. Every time I go to the CPA at the end of the year, she was like, 35,000 miles a year? Now, the average is 12,000. I said, baby, I ain't had 12,000 since I drove daddy's car. It was made to drive. And then some things said, well, I don't want you to hurt my car. Yeah, you're right. 
if it, if it can get 60, I'm going to drive 60. If it can get up to 75, I'm going to drive 80. It was built to drive. It was made to drive. Don't get caught up on your stuff so much so until you miss God and make your car your God. One guy got a brand new car. He walks around with a towel. And every time he stops to have a conversation, he's around there with a towel wiping. I said, man, don't come back anymore. I can't even have a decent conversation with you because you out there polishing your new car. And it doesn't take one dent for him to fall out with God because his brand new car has gotten dead. Jesus says, go and sell it and give what you give to the poor. Verse 22 says, but he was sad at this word and went away grieved for he had great possessions. Let me just share with you. You can be rich and be godly. So whoever told you the lie that you gotta be poor to make it to heaven, let me serve you notice, there are a lot, a lot, a lot of poor folk going to hell. There are a lot of rich people going to heaven. The only thing you have to do is trust this same Jesus we're talking about. Right there, right there, right there. It's good. Young folk, you ought to buy what you want to buy. Put it where you want to put it. Go where you want to go. Right. But you ought to make sure that God is first in your life. All right. All right. All right. All right. But Jesus is saying to him, you can't even make it to heaven because your heart is not turned toward God. Right. Why would I give you more stuff when you're not using what you have to glorify God? Folk ride to church every Sunday, one person in a car that will hold six people. If you're not using it to glorify God, then it has become your God. All right. So every time I get in the car with a friend of mine that I'm eating, I say, I ask the question, can I eat in your car? <laughs> he said, well, you, the folk don't. But I said, well, ride in my car. You can eat and throw the paper out and I'll clean it up when I get home. <laughs> but just, put it, just put it in the floor. It, it's clean. It, it, uh, it's nothing that a little water won't help. Right. A little soap won't take care of. But when we put our focus on things that are not ours, matter of fact, it's not yours. It's just belonged to you. It belongs to God. And everything that belongs to God, you ought to give God glory for it. If you didn't walk here today, you ought to give God glory for it. If you slept in a bed last night, you ought to give God glory for it. If you, if you had food to eat, you ought to give God glory for it. See, the problem is we got folks that don't think about well, you don't even have to think about whether or not you're going to eat. You think about what I'm going to choose to eat. There are people who are actually living on the streets of Houston who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Jesus says, sell your stuff and go down there under the bridge and share it with you. This is a great mission, mission moment. This is a great mission message because we have to understand there's always somebody doing worse than you are. You can, you can talk about how bad you're doing if you want to. Let me tell you, there's always somebody that's doing worse than you are. All you got to do is hear the testimony. You see, we don't tell our testimony until we through and God has brought us through. But if you just sit down with some people and ask them, how did you get where you are? They'll tell you, they, they worked for a Fortune 500 company and they just got one peak strip one day and they were out of their houses. Yeah. And you think they're bad people. The only difference between you and them is God's amazing grace. It is God's grace. God's grace has kept us here. God's grace has blessed us. God's grace is what's going to keep us. And Jesus passed out that grace over 2,000 years ago. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. He took a stick. He took a tree. He, he took a branch. He marched up Calvary's hill. He died, I tell you, on a skull hill called Calvary. And they took him off the cross. They laid him in a bar or two. But on that third day morning, he got up with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. And if you can trust in Jesus, you can get to go to heaven when you die. And your rewards will be great when you pass out blessings to other people. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You need to trust Jesus. The text declares that we need to trust Jesus 
And as we trust in Jesus, he's able to bless us. He's able to keep us. Trust in Jesus. Make life better. The senior saint says, it gets better wrong by wrong. As we climb this ladder, every wrong that we go up, it gets better and better. Trust in Jesus will pay off after a while. Politicians have shown you that you can't trust them. Doctors and nurses have shown you you can't trust them. But we can put our trust in Jesus. By believing the story that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died for our sins. He rose from the dead. That same Jesus is available to you today. Would you bow your head with me and repeat after me and just invite him into your life? If you've never received Jesus as your personal Savior, this is your moment. Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life. make me a new person. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe that you pray this prayer that you're born again and you're on your way to heaven. We believe that Jesus of Christ will meet you one day in mid -air. And there may be others who are in between church homes or don't have a church home. Whether you're here or by way of air, I offer you New Beginning Church, where Jesus is the center of attention, and he's the main attraction. Trust him. And for those of us who find ourselves in sin, Paul says, every time I would to do good, evil is present with me. I know you meant well, but you yield to sin. I want to pray with you and pray for you. Lord Jesus, we come and we thank you. We ask you to bless us now. Forgive us, Lord. Give us hope. Give us strength. Give us deliverance. And bless us to walk with you, Lord. Compel us. Show us the way that we will trust in Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. When we thank God for who he is and what he's already done, we praise him. We worship him and we, we glorify him for he is the great God and the great King. He is the one who makes all things well. It is now offering time. It is now offering time. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand up real high in the air. Raise your hand real high. If you need an envelope, you will be served. Please raise your hand very high and you will be served. You have a white and blue envelope for tithes offering your sacrificial gifts. You have a white and red envelope for the pastor's love offering. For those who are watching, you can give, and those who are in this room also, you can give by mailing your offering to New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. 77459. Or you can give by way of Zell. The Zell account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. The idea is as we lift Jesus, he draws all men unto himself. Father God, we thank you for this privilege of giving. We thank you for money. We thank you for increase. We thank you for income. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us to give unto you. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. When I have this side to stand, please, follow the young man from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. He is good. Oh, give thanks. Please follow the 
young lady from the rear to the front, bring forth the Lord's tithes off of him, sacrificial. Well, he is. He is worthy. Thank you for, for being our guest on today. Thank you so much. We look forward to, let me see, see if I read you right enough to call you on the phone here. <laughs> let me see which one of y'all right now can read. Let's see. I won't tell everybody which one I read better. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hallelujah to the Lamb. God is good. Isn't God good? Thank you so much for being our, our visitor. Our business here on today. And as we close out in prayer today, we want to remember some people in prayer. We want to remember Bridget and Eli Johnson uh, for their health concern. Bridget and Eli Johnson. We want to remember Patricia and Barbara Robertson and these two families. We want to remember Nicholas Wynn and his family. Nicholas Wynn used to be a male usher at the back door. His son was around eight, nine years old to about 10 when they were here. Uh, we funeralized the son on yesterday, on, on Friday. We funeralized the son on Friday. Damus, we, we funeralized him. So we want to lift this family in prayer. So I also want to let you know, as the family was gathering for the wake on Thursday, and Nicholas, the father, Nicholas, who used to be our usher, uh, they began to lead the wake. And his brother was in a car accident and was killed leaving the way. So Brother Wynn lost his son and his brother within eight days of each other. And uh, our heart goes out to him, his wife, and his family. And uh, we want to keep this family in prayer. Uh, God is doing what God does. And God is the great consoler. God is the consoler in chief. We just need to pray for Nicholas Wynn and his, and his family. We'll play for Sister Lorreen Moore, who's my mother-in-law and Sister Davis' mother. Uh, and she's a mother-in-law, not a mother-outlaw. She's a mother-in-law. So we want to lift up Sister Lorreen Moore. We'll play for Sister Eloise Johnson in doing this bereavement period. And then we've been praying for the Velasquez family. The family had been attacked by COVID-19 
and the mother went on to be with the Lord. So we want to keep this family, this family in mind. That's why I say to you, get vaccinated, get vaccinated, get vaccinated. And if you didn't hear me, get vaccinated. In case you didn't hear me that time, get vaccinated. We're going to depend on the science, the scientists and the experts. And forget about all the other all the other rumors that you hear, get vaccinated. I said to you that there were 35, 39, 39 pregnant women in one hospital, all of them unvaccinated, all 39 pregnant women had COVID-19. 39 in the same hospital, all of them expecting a baby, and all of them unvaccinated, all of them hospitalized from COVID-19. If we want COVID-19 to go back to hell where it comes from, we gotta do our part. We wanna make sure we we do we do our part. Amen. While we stand, we want this maestro to play us out. And uh, he's gonna play us out. We're glad that he has joined us today. God bless you and God keep you as our friend.